So, you just started watering waves and you don't know what to do. Be careful. There are a thousand different ways you can mess up your account. There are a couple of tips I've learned from playing watering waves for the past three days on how to not mess up your account as an F2P beginner. Let's begin. Watering Waves is a combat-based gacha RPG. It's open world and it looks amazing. However, both the gacha system and the combat system are very different from the rest of the other RPGs. Usually combat systems and gacha games usually have only two buttons at most, the skill and the ult button. There is, for example, an extra skill which you can get from gathering echoes, we'll touch upon that later. And then there is also, that is a goat, but there is also a swap off and swap on skill, which you are able to do if your character on the right hand corner has a glowing uh, aura around them like this. There, it just did one right there. If you swap it as per normal, without the glowing aura, it will not trigger a swap off skill. There's also dodge and parry mechanics, which if you dodge, you can bullet time the enemies, like many hack and slash games like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry. Or you can also parry the enemies, which there's also a parry meter. And if you break that parry meter, the enemies get stunned for a couple of seconds. However, this only works on big elite enemies. It will not work on smaller mobs. In terms of damage, unlike Genshin, everything is always imbued. So if your character is Electro, it's always Electro. If your character is a Nemo, it's always a Nemo. There are a few different types of elements in this game. However, they don't interact with each other necessarily. So there is Spectro. Aero, Electro, uh, Glacio, and Havoc. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and Fusion. And as usual, some mobs can be weaker or stronger to these damage types, depending on what element they are. There's also this Concerto level. So, this Concerto level, depending on your character. Once again, uh, combat system is a bit complicated here. This meter right here, you get by basically basic attacking, swapping off uh, characters, and doing combo attack. If you take the main character for example, your skill actually relies on this meter. If there's no meter, you can't skill. But for some reason, even though you have a meter, it also needs to cool down? I don't know how that makes sense, but that's how it is. For Yang Yang, her meter isn't for her skill, but instead a huge AoE aerial attack, which you can do mid-air. For Kalkaro, it's for his charge attack or heavy attack. Without it, uh, it's gonna be somewhat weaker. But usually choose which mouse button you need to activate this meter. But most of the time, it won't trigger unless it's full. In the case of Jian Shin, this meter only happens when I hold down, which, as you can see here, drains the whole meter for shields. Without that meter, my charge attack would just be a normal charge attack, like this. So very somewhat complex combat. Definitely puts a twist to most combat-based gacha games. My next tip to you is use the wave plates. Wave plates are basically your typical gacha energy system. The fastest way, which is this right here, which you unlock almost immediately after entering the town in the game. This is your typical credit and EXP farm. This is the EXP for your characters, and this is the EXP for your weapons. You also get experience for your onion level, and this will basically speed up your progress in the game. These are gated by time though, so be sure to use it wisely. What I would recommend you doing is if your characters are level 20 to 40 like mine, and if the main trio in your party are capped at 40, what you should do is prioritize these bosses first, which you couldn't do if you don't unlock every single waypoint out there, because you can't teleport to these bosses by the way. You can only track them. So it's gonna absolutely suck if you unlock the world and have to walk from here all the way to here. Especially when the topology of the map is very hilly and mountainous. But obviously when starting a game, these bosses will be super super hard. So my next tip to you is to level up your characters first to level 40 at least because those essential materials are not gated by any wave plates at all. As you can see here, if I level up my Baiji and a center these materials you can find in the overworld by just defeating enemies right here. 
which you can track as well via the handbook. So once you've leveled up your characters, the next thing you would need to level up is your weapons. Weapons are a bit finicky in the game because you won't be able to get any 4 star weapons unless you craft them or you get really really lucky or unlucky depending on how you see it and get them in the standard or this banner right here. I managed to get a great sword on the standard banner so that's why my main DPS, Kalkaro right here, is equipping this on him. But, uh, for the most part, you will be using a 3-star weapon at first. There's no shame in that. Just try to find the one with attack percentage instead of something like energy regen and all that. Personally, I don't find any energy regen or uh, defense to be very useful early game. Especially when you can dodge and parry enemies just like that. Also, if you have Bai Ji in your party, you can also heal while at it. And lastly, your Echoes. Your Echoes are something you want to level up. Same thing here. Uh, the only reason I have this SSR Echo is because uh, there was a web event that you can get before the game releases. And you can get a 5 star Echo if you lock on it before the game started. All you need to do is reach Onion level 8 and it'll appear right in your mailbox. Right here. Right here. Yes. So the Echo Dex at the Union level is actually very different. The Union level is basically your Ascension level, so it depends on, depending on what Union level you are or what world level you are in, it will change the level of the mobs and the drops of the mobs. So, Echoes, what are they? These are mobs in the game, but you may know them as runes or relics. These things are stuff that will give attributes to your character, However, there is a bit of a catch over here. If you would like to know more about Echoes, let me know down in the comments down below and I will make an in-depth guide about it later on. But for now, the TLDR of it is there are three types of Echoes, a 4 cost, a 3 cost, and a 1 cost. You have 10 costs in total, so basically the order of it doesn't really matter too much as long as it amounts up to 10. Eventually, later on in the game, you're gonna get 12. But for now, at the beginning to mid-game, I believe it's stuck at 10. Even though the stats are random, the pieces of 4 cost echoes usually have a crit on it, and the cost 3 echoes usually have an elemental damage bonus on it. 1 star echo is your usual attack, HP, defense percentage, along with another substat. What I wouldn't recommend you doing, unless you have a really good echo, do not max it out immediately. The reason being, substats do not unlock automatically. What I mean by that is, even though there are slots for substats, you need this currency right here, which you can find in the overworld. However, if you do mess up and don't like the first substat, let's say it's defense, and then you unlock the second substat and it's HP, use it A, your currency, and B, your time in leveling up this echo, because these currencies are not cheap. Not cheap at all. So do note that substats are not free. You need these tuners to unveil your substat. Upgrading your echo does not mean that you automatically get a good substat. It's just that it unlocks a slot for your substat to be in. Whatever that substat is, you need these tuners to unveil that substat. And as to what substat it is, it's randomized. So be very careful. The only reason I max this out is because it has an attack percentage and we definitely need some damage early game. Before we continue, please subscribe so that we can reach our goal by maybe September. Highly appreciated. Thanks. So, data bank, or what I would like to call an echo dex. There are two different types of leveling you need to do in this game. First of all is your union or onion level, and one more is your echo dex. It's actually a Pokemon sort of mechanic, which also ends up being your relics. The more Pokemon you catch, the more experience you get in your data bank. I would recommend focusing on this first because your data bank is very, very important for it not only increases the chance of you getting rarer echoes, it also upgrades your stamina. There's no rush to this though for you won't be getting an SSR echo soon until your echo dex reaches level 15. So what I would recommend for now if you're just starting out is kill everything in the world because not only will it upgrade your echo dex, there's only a chance for you to get these Echoes. These Echoes are based on a percentage chance, so there's not a 100% guarantee that the Echoes will drop every single time you kill the mob. 
There's also one funny thing that I would like to show you. So this is a shiny echo right here. Uh, if you encounter this, kill it immediately because I messed up or the game just hates me. But it put a shiny echo on a blobfly, which is the fastest mob alive. And other than the fact that I didn't have a gun character on my team at this current time, I also was trying hard to record it be because the game isn't completely optimized for my laptop. So I sort of messed up and it flew away. But if you do encounter a shiny echo, you should kill it immediately because not only does it have a 100% capture chance, it's also separated in terms of experience. So if you encounter the same mob but it's a shiny, it's, it counts as a different mob. Oh, also, also, if you capture a 2-star variant of the Echo and capture a 3-star variant of the same Echo, it counts as a different mob. So starting from databank level 5, you should be farming these Echoes more frequently because not only does the 2-star variants of the same Echo exist, there's also a chance of getting a 3-star variant which would increase your Echo level even further. So uh, be sure to farm the world for those. As to which Echoes you should be prioritizing, well, early game, you don't really need to prioritize by much, but if you can, grab a tree, cost 3 or cost 4 Echo. You can also get the Echoes from the overworld, so there's no really necessarily a need to go into the domains, even though they actually do exist. Like, for example, right here. I don't see a reason why you need to do this when you can actually find them in the overworld, but that's just my opinion, early game. You should really just focus on the bosses to upgrade your characters to a higher level. That's what I think you should focus on early game. So, as to who you should level up first, I would recommend your main DPS's first. Your main DPS, if you didn't get Jiyeon right here from his banner, or if you didn't get Kalkaro from the selector, or if you didn't get him from the first 50 beginner summons, what I would recommend is you build the main character. The main character is not bad in terms of damage. You should also build her or him nevertheless because they're actually really good in terms of carrying your team. Uh, even though they're not your main character right here, I have her as a sub DPS unit. Right after you finish building your main DPSs, maybe you should go for a healer next if you can't dodge or you have a ping like mine. If you're wondering my, why my ping is so high, uh, I have friends in other places. Or I just enjoy the challenge of being smacked around or mom's respawning even though I'm in the zone. I don't know. You tell me. So, as of the recording of this guide, should you waste Asteroid on standard pulls? No and never. Even though it's a guaranteed character like this Encore right here, you should never rush with Asteroid. The reason for that being, these limited time characters tend to be really good and you should only waste your Asteroid on these summons right here. And if you miss, you have a chance of getting these characters, one of these five characters. As of now, there are five of. So you might as well just use your Asteroid to summon on this banner right here. Also, apparently, I don't know whether this is a good thing for you, but it's a good thing for me. Your weapon currency is a different currency altogether. Why I think this is a plus point is First of all, this weapon currency, you can apparently get them in the monthly shop. It's right here. So at first I thought this was a billet, but instead, it's actually the weapon currency. So you should buy out the monthly shop right now. No rush, there's still 40 days before it's over. But you should always buy those three currencies right there and ignore these because uh, early game, you really don't have much of the summon currency to go around. Should you prioritize summoning for the weapon before you get the character though? No. So, uh, I would not waste Asteroid on summoning on the weapon if you do not have the character itself. Okay, to those re-rollers out there. Do you want to summon on this banner? No. The reason why is you probably need an hour just to get to the summon. And second of all, as of the recording of this video, your inbox should give you enough currency to trigger the first 5 star of the beginner banner. The beginner banner is always 20% off, so you can basically summon for 50 in just under 40 summons. If you get it earlier, great! Why? Because directly after you exhausted your beginner banner, it will actually give you a choice selector for you to summon in, and even though it costs 80, it actually gives you a guaranteed 5 star character. 
So to those re-rollers who actually want to get uh, more than two five stars in one go, I would definitely not go for this one because what you get is random. I would definitely go for the choice selector. Also, also, as of the recording of this video, they actually give one 5-star selector. And if you're wondering who to go for, Encore is a sub-DPS unit, Jianxin is a somewhat tank, Ling Yang is a DPS, but I don't really like his playstyle. I have him on trial on the companion quest, and it's very disorienting. Farina is a healer, and Kakaro is a main DPS. So pick and choose depending on what you get on the beginner banner, and maybe uh, this selector can be your fill. Personally, I pick Kalkaro because I'm lacking in the DPS department, and I need Encore as a sub-DPS pyro unit. Oh, also, also, the standard weapon banner is guaranteed. So directly you're, after you exhausted this one, I would recommend choosing a weapon. As to what weapon you should choose, I would recommend going for either the blade, the normal sword, or the gun. Because the rest has attack percentage, which is sort of fine, but... I think you want to go for crits more, considering that you only have a base 5% chance, but a base 150 crit damage. Which is really off balance, but uh, what can you do? Besides, there's a whole shtick about additive and multiplicative damage, but hey, I'm not a calculator, even though I'm Asian. So play the game if you have too much time on your hands and you want to reroll anyway, even after getting a guaranteed character, well, that's completely up to you. Would I go for constellations in the selector though? Uh, no, it's not recommended because early game to mid game, you definitely need to fill out your roster with different elements, especially when these five play different roles all together. Oh, also, also, other than the weapon banner that you will be summoning on to get a guaranteed weapon, they will also apparently give you a five star selector right after you reach a certain union rank. In this case, it's 45. And as you can see, just by playing for about 2 days, I already reached level 20, so this won't be long before you get this 5 star weapon. Should you rush? I wouldn't recommend it. But are these summons great to get? Yes. Yes they are. Other than wasting your wave plates, what should you be doing in order to increase your union level? Well, you should always, obviously, be doing your daily missions. Daily missions are available day 1. Uh, I don't think they are union level locked. But as soon as the day resets, you should be able to do the daily missions. They also they give a lot of union points. These union levels give more than 600 in total, which is a lot. But there are some certain tasks that you need which uh, may hinder your progress. So, so pick and choose your task. Like I said, uh, go for the overload enemy class if you, if you want fast progress. But... Uh, obviously these bosses are not easy to do early game. So do your doable ones and ignore the others. Especially when it comes to echoes and tuning. Since it's a limited source, you don't really want to waste your echo tuning thing willy nilly. Unless it's a 3 star echo, as to which, go ahead, go ham. Because it's re relatively common and it's gonna get replaced by a 4 star echo soon anyway. So you get this currency from basically just opening chests and exploring the world overall. You also get these from getting these tuners and sometimes even by mistake. This currency is for you to trade for stuff in the city. What I would recommend you trade these for are different resources, but if you're rushing your character, especially the flowers, it can be annoying to get without an interactive map. So Sonnen's Casket, these are basically your oculuses and could be marked on the map by a certain square or cube. Please mark your map right after you get these things. Or, even better, if you can, use an interactive map. The reason why is because these oculuses don't really respawn and you do not want to be stuck uh, looking for that one oculus in this big, big map right here. And as of the recording of this guide, there is no tracker. But that will do it for now. I'm off to defeat Kalkaro's boss because I have not done what I literally said in this video. Those are the mistakes I have done so far and what I could see other people doing. I hope you didn't do these mistakes before you watch this video. Otherwise, ugh. Big oof. Big oof. But anyway, Wu was looking a lot smoother now, so I might try streaming it again. If you didn't catch my first stream, I'll leave a link somewhere in the description below or somewhere at the corners right here. 
stay tuned for the echo video because for now I don't think I have enough echoes to be able to speak on their behalf. Uh, I've seen people who got 5 star echoes in the community just like that. Uh, you guys are insane. You guys are... Touch grass, please. Please touch grass. Please subscribe to get notified as to when I release that echo video and as to when I'm live again. But anyways, this is Dr. Tusik signing off. Thanks for watching. See ya!